if there was ever a letdown in the NBA playoffs, it has to be Kawhi Leonard sitting for game three, a critical home game for the Los Angeles Clippers. If ever a letdown, please, I'm coming to expect that from Kawhi at this point. This is why I have been off the Clippers bandwagon for quite some time. So it's just unfortunate. I just was not, that wasn't it for me. Now, granted, he is injured. And so I respect the injury piece of it. It de- it still does not negate the fact that it was disappointing, you know? Yeah, but, you know, just imagine if Kawhi was playing. Well, first of all, if PG was on the court. But what I'm saying is Normie Powell and Russell Westbrook had monster games. You tie that in with the Kawhi Leonard, even at 50%. Because I think Kawhi Leonard has just gotten to a point where he believes he should feel 100% for the entire season. And that's just not reality. He needs to know that there will be nicks and bruises and, and, and a little bit of uncomfortness. <laughs> Silly. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. As you, Yeah, as you get through the grind of the season, you already miss most of the season. Like, mm-hmm. come on, this is why they saved you for games like this, for nights like this. And for him to miss game three, it, I, I just thought it was tragic. I really did. Yeah, you know what? And I think he may have been okay with playing with a nick and bruise if it wasn't a re-tweak to his existing injury maybe that's what it was but Kawhi is very cautious about his body as much as I hate that he did not play in game three I do get that he needs to preserve himself but unfortunately the Clippers suffered due to him not playing that game I mean when you're talking about having Bones Highland coming off the bench with 20 points for in a Clippers jersey I mean, it was missed. It was just a missed opportunity. I think that the Clippers could have brought this game home. They just needed, like you say, fifty percent production from Kawhi Leonard, and it would have been a wrap. Yes, instead yeah. we had Devin Booker going off for what forty-five or something. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Forty-five. But I, yeah. But I said, but I have said, if you guys have followed us for some time, that in order for the Suns to really secure this series, Devin Booker will have to be the one to lead the charge, and he he did that. Now, he did that without Kawhi playing. Would that be the same thing if Kawhi was playing at his at his maximum capacity? Now, his maximum capacity may not be fully healthy, but, you know, whatever his maximum capacity is and whatever Kawhi Leonard feels comfortable with, would Devin Booker have been able to do 45? I don't know. So. Well, one of my key takeaways was the Phoenix Suns got 10 points off the bench. How in the world can we expect the Phoenix Suns, and I don't even know that it is an expectation, but for make it to the NBA Finals with no bench production, is Devin Booker really going to carry them, literally drag them to the NBA Finals? Because, and, and I don't mean, you know, to make, K, to, to make light of KD's greatness, but I'm going to need more from him if the Suns are going to, you know, make this, make it. Uh, basically secure the, the series against the Los Angeles Clippers? You know, I just don't think it's going to be possible. So if if the Suns are able to come out of this series with the Clippers, if that bench doesn't figure out a way to get more points than 10, it's going to be a wrap for them in round two. This is not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. It will not be enough. I said that if the, you have a solid bench... Your likelihood, I believe, in being able to go deep is much greater. I just don't, you know, and we cannot take this game three from the Clippers and Suns and think the Clip, the Suns have done something. Kawhi Leonard didn't play, y'all. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And if you check the score, the, the score was 129 to 124. That's without Kawhi. Yes. It should have been a blowout, if, if I'm going to be honest. But again, you got Norman Powell, who is their X Factor. I just, I don't, I'm. Although the Suns won, I don't know if I was really, I don't believe I was impressed with it. It was an expected win for me because Kawhi didn't play. Like, yeah, you, were supposed yeah. to win that, you were supposed to win that game. Now, it yes. would have been devastating had the Suns lost. Then the narrative would be a little bit different. But, no, uh-uh. Suns, great job on game three. Great job on bringing the series 2-1. If Kawhi plays, I believe their next game, their next matchup is on Saturday. And then we'll uh-huh. see what it brings. But uh, if Kawhi doesn't play, then this series is most definitely over. But if he plays, the Clippers 
they still have a chance because the sun's bench is depleted. <laughs> depl the sun's bench is actually in Brooklyn. There was a boogie down fight, right? Like, what was going on with Joel Embiid and James Harden? Both. I mean, did the refs really have to eject James Harden for that? It didn't look like it was a serious foul. I think the refs are real touchy touchy now. Everybody's real sensitive since the Draymond incident. Well, thank Draymond for that. Hence, is uh, another repercussion of that hideous act. I don't need to get me started on that one. But yeah, so now they, they can't even remotely even act like they're going to, you know, even play or, you know, just like even show any minor aggression. It's going to be a technical. Maybe flagrant too. They just want everybody out the game. I know. That was well, disappointing. Like the playoffs is supposed to be physical now. Okay. See, but when you have someone do extra, i.e. Draymond Green, now everybody's going to be suffering. It's just not about him. Oh, my God. Ah, oh. uh, okay, okay. So let's talk about the greatness of Stephen Curry. I mean, I knew what to expect from Steph, right? He's a yep. champion. He's a champion, and he has a lot of heart and pride in him. Come on. You know good and well they were not going to go down 0-3 to the Sacramento Kings, especially in Chase Center where the Warriors have played well all season. We know that their Achilles heel has been road games, and they lost two games. In Sacramento, so I, this was pretty much expected. Yes, yes, this game met my expectations in the fact that the Warriors won. I knew they, were, I expected them to win. So the win from the Warriors in this particular matchup, Game Three, did not surprise me. What did surprise me, though, is the fact that the Kings folded. I didn't appreciate that. <laughs> I did not appreciate that. How do you allow the Warriors to really pretty much cakewalk through game three. I just don't think there was enough effort. I just missed the competitiveness for me in this game. I knew the Warriors were going to win. I just wanted the Kings to put up more of a fight, and they didn't do that at all. Yeah, they, looked, yeah. they looked shook, I'm going to be honest. They did. Keegan Murray, Malik Monk gave him nothing. I think four points or so, which is like a far cry from his 28, 32 points or so off the bench. I'm like, wait a minute. You know, even Fox missed a couple of key shots when he eventually got going. They did not look like themselves at all. And I think the um, the stage was a little big. You know, I expect more from them in game four. Me too. But, you know, they're a young team. Again, playoff experience. Their lack of, I think, is starting to show just a little bit. And uh, maybe they were comfortable just getting their wins in Sacramento because they know they have home court advantage. And they don't have to win on the road. For this series. They really don't. <laughs> Actually, they don't. They can take it a full seven and still come out of the series victorious. Yes, I do. I do agree with that. I will say this. Now, I know the Demonte's opponents will get you a double-double anytime you step on the court, but his double-doubles are, are non-effective. I just don't want him with the ball in his hand. I'm sorry. I know this may be an unpopular opinion, but his butterfingers is driving me crazy. And every time he has a ball in his hands, I'm cringing. I'm like, if you don't pass that ball to somebody, please. And please don't let him get in up under that basket. He just, and I'm, in my mind, I'm saying don't pass the ball to Devonta Sabonis because he's going to fumble it under the basket. And there you go. Every time. I can't. I don't know what it is. Is the stage too big for him? Like, what is, I don't know. Or perhaps he was a little still unsettled because of the incident that happened in game two. So oh, I'll give it that. Yes, I'll give it course. that, Chase Center. I'm quite sure there may have been chants that I probably couldn't hear on the sideline. You know, from fans, maybe that kind of messed up his psyche. So I'm going to attribute his inefficiencies, I guess. I don't know what the right word was, right word is, but I'll attribute it to that because I expect more from him in game four. I cannot look at DeMontis Sabonis box score and think that he actually balled out because he did not. It was not it for me. For me. So. Yes, yes. And the crowd booed him every time he touched the ball. Now I'm telling you, everybody cannot be the villain. You can't, right? Yes. And and I think DeMontis Sabonis was kind of, you know, showing us that he's really not a bad guy. 
you know, and he cannot, maybe he can't perform under those type of circumstances where everybody hates him in the arena. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You it know? was so really I, bad. It was yeah. really bad. And I'm telling you, when he shot his, almost every shot he made, or he, not every shot, the shots that he did take, they didn't even hit the rim. Like, why are your shots short? I was over it. I was so over it. And I think that impacted. I, I can tell you the Warriors, because they have their championship pedigree, they knew how to overcome Draymond's uh, antics. Unfortunately, the Kings have not experienced what that is on this big stage. And I think it bothered them in game three. It showed up yes. that they were shook in game three because of for me. So yes. I, I cannot wait to see what game four brings. I do expect more from the Kings in game four. And I think that the fight will be a lot more competitive for the Warriors in game four. Although I still think the Warriors will win at home. So we'll see. Well, yeah, with Draymond, first of all, I said that the Warriors would be playing angry because they, you know, they feel like the league was unfair to them when they suspended Draymond. Mm -hmm. Now, that was game three. I knew they would have the energy to, to win game three. But when you talk about game four, looking forward, Draymond Green will be back in the building. The type of energy and focus and tenacity that he brings, I just expect the Warriors to tie the series. Then we have yeah. basically a 2-2 series with the best of three, and I'm not sure. Now, again, I think the Warriors to win this series, but I did not expect it. But then I expect it to go seven. I have to check back, check back my notes on one of our previous videos. But I did have the Warriors coming out. It's a shame because the Sacramento Kings had an awesome season and they started off this first round really well at home. And to lose the series is what I expect is just going to be detrimental. I think it, 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 they'll get the playoff experience, but it will feel like a waste. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that this is the a par for the course for the Kings um, new culture, their new journey. And I believe that they will come back next season a lot stronger, provided that they keep their core, provided that they keep their core. And I think that they are on the right path. I think Mike Brown is a perfect coach to do that. And this experience is what teams need in order for them to build um, their playoff experience, their, you know, Playoff pedigree. I mean, you only can get playoff pedigree if you're in the playoffs. So, you know, their first season back after 17 seasons, if they win, if they come out of this series, I will be extremely happy for them. If they do not come out of this series, I believe that their challenge was met and their expect they exceeded their expectations for this season. The Kings exceeded their expectations the moment they made it to the playoffs. So okay. I'm, anything after that is a bonus for me. Okay, even with Mike Brown winning Coach of the Year, De'Aaron Fox winning Clutch Player of the Year, you think yeah. if they get kicked out of the first round, it's still a success? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yes, for real. Yes, for me, yes, still a success. Mm -hmm. Okay, all yep. right, all right. All right, so let's look forward to the games on tonight, Friday night. What are we looking at? Okay, so Friday night, let's see what's going on. Let me check the NBA app. You know what it is, a little suspect. <laughs> so let me, make sure, let, me, let me make sure that the circle is over the – the number and the yellow line is under the date as well. <laughs> Let's check. Okay. So today is Friday, April 21st. We have Boston and Hawks. Game three. Boston currently leads that series. Boston, go ahead and close it out. Stop playing. Yes. Don't even yes. play. Get in there and get out. Matter of fact, just make it quick. All right. And then we have the Cavaliers and Knicks. Game three, the series is tied 1-1, and this game is in New York. Mm. Yeah. What do you anticipate? Uh, that's going to be a good one. That series is going seven. It don't really matter who wins. We, going, we are going the full length for this series. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I, and this is their first, Nick's first home game in the series. Mm. Oh, it's going to be rocking. Oh, my it better goodness. be, because I'm telling you right now, right? I have not see, heard an arena. <laughs> Give me the feels that the Sacramento Kings fans have given me. Until you do that, I'm like, mm -mm, y'all gonna go some. I'm gonna need a battle of the fan base. <laughs> okay, great. And the last game of the night is Nuggets and Timberwolves. The game will be in Minnesota. This is game three, and Nuggets are up 2 0. Oh, wow. You know, okay. Nuggets, again, Nuggets make it quick. 
Just yes. you know, just put the put, put the wolves out of their misery. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, no, it seems like there's only one really good series going on tonight, and that's the Cavs and the Knicks. <laughs> the only must-watch game tonight, I totally agree, is the game three of Cavs and Knicks. Yes. Yeah. All right. 